It's always, you know, when I'm just relaxing, when I'm pondering on things, you know, I'm alone, spending alone time, just relaxing. And I just start thinking about stuff and going in my head and just pondering on these things. Oh, man. It's always so much that I'm thinking about. And thinking about the spirit of truth. And how it literally leads and guides us. We gotta hear that small, still voice that's on the inside of us. I was just thinking about how people make such a fuss about the actual name and pronunciation of the Father and of the Son, you know? And like, I was thinking about what I read in a sealed portion about how different areas of where our people grew up, the children of Israel that were scattered, okay, like we all have like different customs of, you know, you take on the customs of the, you know, your people around you. That's a known fact. Unless you're like an eyeball, you know, but even me, even, even those of us that didn't fit in, we still take on some customs of those around us, you know? So, like, it's the same thing, you know, like in how we worship, you know, even though we are taught how to worship, you know, in the Christian church and whatnot, or if you were raised Catholic, you know, it would be those kind of customs, you know, or if you were raised where you just reverence the Most High, the Great Spirit, you know, did whatever you did. Now the chanting, I don't know about that because the scripture does talk against chanting. Don't be, you know, saying the same thing repetitiously over and over and over and over and over again because the Father already knows what's on your heart before you open your mouth to speak it. So it's, you shouldn't be saying the same thing over and over again like chanting like the wicked do. So, I don't know. I'm still kind of like, I don't believe that our people um, did the things that the Native Americans that we've been shown, like, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, I, I don't know, man. I'm just, I, I can't see my people doing stuff like that, you know? But anyway, that being said, it doesn't matter how we worship Him as long as it's genuine, as long as it's without bloodshed and the wicked things, as long as it's of the heart and it's pure and innocent. He doesn't care what you call him. You know, the names that you've become accustomed to. As for me, I've become accustomed to Ahia or Yahuwah and or the Most High. You know? Like that but that's me. That's what I'm comfortable with. Referring to the Messiah, you know, as Yahusha, pretty much, instead of Jesus, you know. But it doesn't matter. If people refer to him as Jesus. You know, yes, those of us that have been allowed to know that the letter J didn't exist, you know, until about 500 years ago, we realize that. But not everybody has been privy to that knowledge. And they have come to know the Messiah under the false pretense name of Jesus, okay? So we cannot disregard their relationship with the Messiah just because they're referring to him as Jesus. It is determined based on their actions. So if they truly live by the words of the Messiah, 
who they refer to as Jesus, it doesn't matter that they're calling on the name Jesus. He's still going to hear them all together. Now, as far as in their traditions, like how they choose to serve Him, like that does need a little bit of tweaking because they are relying on the precepts of men in order to serve the Father. But they don't have to rely on the precepts of men to serve the Father. And that is where they're erroring. They error in that. Because they should know that it is wrong to shed innocent blood. And they should know that the Father never gave us dead bodies to eat. So why is it that Christians, most of them, don't know that? That's because they have lended their ear and their hearts and their minds to false teachers and false leaders that have lied to them and are leading them to utter destruction. And it's the same thing with the Muslims. And it's the same thing with every single social construct upon the face of the earth. There is the original eternal law of the Most High Almighty, thou shalt not kill. The eternal law of love. And if you followed and obeyed it, if you obey that law, those laws, those eternal principles, there is no way we will be eating the dead flesh and blood of slaughtered animals. We would all be eating from the earth. We all would be eating the things that grow from the earth. There would be no bloodshed. There would be no wars. There would be no hatred and envy and strife and all of these things that come through consuming flesh and blood. It is the forbidden fruit. It is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. I mean, dang, it, like to me it can't be no clearer than this. It is the seduction that has gripped the entire world. I mean, how else could there be billions upon billions of establishments selling the dead, mutilated body parts of innocent animals all over the earth? How else would that be possible unless our consciousness have been seared with a hot heart and the whole earth is asleep and deceived to the wiles of Satan? So I ponder on these things, and I'm like, dang, man, Satan is crafty. He'll cause us arguing with one another over petty, stupid things like the pronunciation of the name of the Messiah. We'll have people that want to even get even more petty and be like, that term Messiah, that's pagan too. Look, dude. It doesn't matter. Everybody has their speech, okay? Everybody has their mentality. Everybody has their perspective. All right? The Messiah broke it down perfectly when he described how the truth was glared 
on all sides of a glimmering stone or a precious uh, stone. All right? How it was like a rainbow. And it had all these different colors. And how the truth is like, is surrounded. And as it is, it's like a giant spider web, man. If you really think about it, it's seriously like a giant spider web. Like the Father, the Spirit of Truth makes these connections. And, and that alarm that's going off in the background is actually noon here. So that's an alarm that's going off. They do a test every Wednesday at noon when it's sunny out. So anyway, man, Satan is crafty. He keeps us bickering about stupid things that don't matter. But yet, the most simple things is the most important. The most simplest things is the most important. Thou shalt not kill. That animal would never have winded up on your plate if it wasn't killed, if it wasn't murdered, if it wasn't slaughtered. No matter how you try to justify it, there ain't no justifying it. It's within you. You know damn well that it is wrong to shed innocent blood. Come on, bruh. Let's just keep it real. There are a lot among us that have a rebellious spirit when it comes to the word of the Most High that is within us. They literally look for anything to discredit the word of the Most High that's within us. And you know where they go to look for these things which they think will discredit the word of the Most High? They go to the precepts of men. They go to the preconceived ideologies, to the scripted scripts. They go right there at the leading of their father, Satan, through Paul. Because that's where they live, and they, they live in the Pauline epistles. Who is like an antichrist. So anyway, I use Christianity mostly not to bash on them, but because I grew up Christian. I grew up with the Christian mentality, a Christian ideology. I loved the Left Behind series. I was engulfed in it. I literally read every single book, and I listened to the audio, which is fire, by the way. I had never heard an audio that was Man, well, I had never listened to audios before. That was the first time that I did. But it was extremely entertaining. More so than any of the Left Behind movies that they came out with. Like all the Left Behind movies they came out with. Not meaning to switch topics, but just going to interject this right here. Like, I always wonder, like, why why won't they make it like the book? Because if they made this, this movie like the book, it would be a, like a blockbuster. You know? Like, it would, it would literally be a badass movie. Like, put all of your effects that you put in Transformers and all of that. And literally follow the storyline of the, of the book. And it would be fire. Well, anyway, this audio series, man, it was excellent. I mean, I gotta give credit to Tim LaHaye and Jerry something. They wrote the Left Behind series. So, you know, hats off to them. That is entertaining. It's very entertaining. That is the most entertaining series I've ever read in my entire life. So hats off to them for that because it kept me engaged. This is a damn good book. But at the time that I read it, I had the mentality and a mindset that this is real and this is true. Like, you know, the rapture is really going to take place. And, you know, this is that Gentile fantasy, you know. Uh, but anyway, hell, if Satan had been even more crafty, he would have created a freaking blockbuster movie with that. You know, made it 3D even. You know, like really grained it into the into our heads. You know, 
Hell, I don't know why he didn't think to do that. But anyway, hell, I would have been a customer back then. But anyway, the uh, audio was excellent. Excellent. But anyway, I brought that up about, you know, my mindset at that time is all connected to me being a Christian and being raised Christian. You know, I don't know any other um, religious belief, really. I momentarily got off into the Islam. I started reading a little bit of what they were saying. You know, I started reading a little bit on my own. And um, I remember one thing. I don't even remember how old I was. I don't know. If I had to guess, I would say maybe 13. I don't know. I have no idea. I'm guesstimating. I'm seriously guesstimating. I don't know how old I was. Maybe I can ask my mom. Maybe she might remember. But anyway, um, I was a little curious about Islam and how we were not supposed to eat pork. You know, like, it, it um, that was the first time that I came across that information. And then I liked what they had to say about the discrimination against my people. You know, so that, that was what drew me was the fact that they talked about the discrimination against my people and I had all I had seen it my whole life. You know, I have experienced it and witnessed it in my own life my whole life. You know? Um, I've lived through the the uh, discrimination. To this day I live with being followed around the damn store with store employees randomly everywhere I am. Everywhere I'm, I am in that store, is like two or three of them, you know, like within eye view. Like, really, bro? I'm not even on that. I'm not a thief. I understand the principles. I understand the eternal law. Do unto others what you would them do unto you. So I don't want nobody stealing from me. Therefore, I ain't going to steal from nobody. Now, I will tell you this. I used to be a thief. And guess what? <laughs> I had trials and tribulations added to my already trial and tribulation of being a descendant of Israel. Okay? So many of my people were adding additional transgressions upon our own head. The scripture declares that we, we did worse than our forefathers. Well, we will have to ask ourselves and seek and find out how did they do worse than their forefathers. Because not only were they committing the same things as their forefathers, they were committing even more things, like in our days today, you know? And like back when I was stealing things, and back when I was cold-hearted, back when I was eating flesh and, you know, never really, never really uh, communicated with the Father. You know what I mean? Actually, I have, but I didn't know. That I was communicating with the Father. I didn't know. But I have always been in my head. I've always been the type to ponder on things. And I've always had a lot of questions. A whole lot of questions, bro. And it, it made me a curious person. So the first chance I got to, to check some things out that I had always been curious about. I spent all my time doing that. Researching and this was about 2001 or so. 2001 is 2002, you know. Before then, I couldn't really study or research very much, but I had a lot of questions, and I was curious about a hell of a lot. So, um, at the turn of that millennium, is uh, when I started waking up. Because I started having my questions answered by the Father. Like on a grand scale. He started answering and showing me things. Opening my eyes to things that I had always been curious about. <coughs> I still find it very interesting that um, I learned of the evil... I learned of the evil and the, the, the depths that it could get to. I learned about pedophilia um, at the highest level. I learned about Bohemian Grove. Bohemian Grove 
and you know the trilateral commission and you know the proverbial Illuminati that is you know basically a conjolation of all the different uh, fractions of the shadow government like so factions not fractions whatever um, those that are awake know what I'm talking about. So I learned about all this before I even knew who I was. At the my mindset at that time was that I was a Gentile. You know, I'm a. And I, it was like a double deception. Okay, it was like a double deception because it was like for one, for one, they're saying that I'm a Gentile. Okay, but. Then at the same time, they're saying I'm a Hamite, which come from the seed of Canaan. Okay? So if I'm a Hamite and I come from the seed of Canaan, then I damn sure would not be a Gentile. So that's one lie right out the water. You know, one thing about it is they cannot hide this truth. They can't refute this truth. You know, they know that their time is short. So anyway... This is where the Spirit is leading me to talk about this. They know that their time is at the end. Remember when they came out with, quote, time's up. How it was everywhere. Time's up. It was literally everywhere, right? They subliminally let you know that time is up. You had Donald Trump literally say... On air, like he literally said, he literally said, this is the calm before the storm. And somebody asked him and said, well, what is the storm? And he said, you'll see. And they said, when is, what is the storm? What is it and when is it? And he said, you will see. It was very cryptic, you know. So like they, the, the so-called elite, they know their time is up. They know that is over, okay? They know it's over. So, you know what's going to destroy them? Because all they've done is built their house upon sand. Sand that's crumbling as we speak. Because they cannot refute this truth. This was prophesied to happen. In the last days, the Father is going to raise up His people. Alright? And we're going to speak the words that have been put in our spirit. By way of the spirit of truth. We will be led to different resources to bring out to the people. We are scattered in strategic locations. And we are the one third that is called by our Father since the beginning. Okay? The chosen ones. The genuine chosen ones. Not the called. Because many are called. Many, many, many are called. But only a few are chosen. Okay? And that is the one third. Okay? At the end. The one third at the end. That has come through this fire. Okay? Refining us. Okay? We're submitting to the spirit of truth. We have submitted ourselves unto the Father. By the leading of the spirit. We have stopped following our own ways. And we are following the ways of the Father to the best of our ability. Even with the strongholds that we still have attached to this world such as smoking and different things like that. I have a desire to get a bottle of wine. I am going to keep it 100% real on this channel. You know, it's been like a good six months or so since I had any wine, any alcohol at all. I might have had a beer here and there. One. But it's been a very long time. Uh, and it was just one beer. Okay? So, it's been a long time since I bought any wine. 
and I have a desire to get a bottle. One of my passions has always been music, and I love DJing. You know, I love, you know, getting wine and, you know, or whatever. Back then, hell, I drank liquor, you know, and I used to get drunk. You know, I was getting so drunk that I'd puke on myself. You know, I really got off hardcore into the party lifestyle online, you know, and just doing my thing on there. And that became my life. And I gravitated to that life because it, it literally allowed me to feel like I was being who I was. Because I could never really be with a female physically. Let's just keep it 100% real. I have been, but like I had stipulations. And I know that sometimes my videos is not meant for children at all, okay? So some topics like this one, let me go ahead and warn you. You may want to get your children up out of the room, okay? Like we're adults here, so I should be able to keep it 100% real. I have been with females before, but I wouldn't let them touch me. I, I didn't, I never liked my body. I didn't like the fact that I had, you know, a female body. So, I didn't want to be reminded of that. And, like, you know, I didn't have a mindset, of, oh, this is so hot, two females together. You know, no, like, I never, that, and when I watched porn... That did not turn me on. Two females together, you know, two femies like that never never turned me on. And even the ones that they portraying to be the stud, they naked. Like, they got their titties out, ass out, every damn thing. Like, like how? How, bro? How, sway? Like, I just not, never understood that. Okay? I never understood that. And so, for me... That, that was always a no. I never let them, like, touch me like that because I didn't have the proper body. So setting the stage for where my mindset was at when I discovered a 3D virtual world where I can have an avatar of a male anatomy, okay? So I literally dove into that head first. And I threw myself in that. So even though I thought I was woke, hell, I even created a tag and word on Keneva, and I think I, I called it something like, beware of the new world order. <laughs> beware of the new world order. That was my tag. And that was like freaking 2011, 2012, somewhere around in there. Back in 2012, you know, I was studying about Nibiru. You know, I literally thought I was woke back then. But I really didn't know nothing. Although, I'm like, Father, you allowed me to uncover all the darkness first. And then you gave me the light. But as I was uncovering all of this darkness, reading testimonies and... um. What do you call them? Whistleblowers. Um, victims. Which, I know some people will be so quick to be like, well, why would you believe? Why would you believe that material? Because it makes sense. And, they, and the things that they say cannot be refuted if it was looked into. But it's never looked into because people refuse to even give ear. And people refuse to even freaking read it. Okay? But if you read it, you will understand what I'm saying. These people's story, their story does not differ from one another. And they don't know one another. Okay? Describing the same type of characteristics and personality of this person in secrecy. How would they know about their personality and how they go about raping how would they know that when they don't know one another? Like, that's crazy. And not only that, the eyes is the windows to the soul. So if you look 
through the eyes of these people like George Bush, Dick Cheney, and a, a whole bunch of them. Just look in their eyes. You can see that you look into the eyes of the so-called queen and all of her family. Just look at them. You can see the evil, okay? So, anyway, after coming into the knowledge of the fact that the so-called elite that rule this world are bottomless pit wicked who literally rape and torture little children, Man, I can't, I can't even, I don't want to go into the gory details of this shit, but it, it is bad, okay? And I spent a lot of time reading all of these different stories, reading all these different books, reading about monarch mind control, reading about how they go about trauma-based mind control. How they go about trauma-based mind control. Okay? Many of your so-called celebrities are under trauma-based mind control. Many of your presidents is under trauma-based mind control. Okay? You have puppets set before you literally. Okay? These people are puppets literally. They have demons implanted into them. This book that I read in its entirety breaks down how they go about shattering your mind and making it to where it builds a stronghold, okay? And in that stronghold, they place a demon over it, okay? So they literally imp How do you think that they got this knowledge? This knowledge came from fallen angels, okay? Now, you get this wisdom within the book of Enoch. But there's a lot of people that literally turn their nose up at the book of Enoch. They turn their nose up at any kind of knowledge and wisdom of the Father that he tries to instill into people, but yet they reject it. And then they wonder why they're in the circumstances that they're in. I understand very well why I'm in the circumstances that I'm in, and I'm in repentance, and I'm in remission, and I can see the Father working on my behalf. Just the other day, this is a praise report that I'm going to throw in here, okay? Just the other day, I got a money order on the first, okay? When I got paid, uh, that was the first thing I did was get a money order because I needed to pay the rent for the first, and I damn sure didn't want to pay no late fees, okay? But the thing is, is that my ride didn't show up until late, like after 5, after the office closed. The first was on a Tuesday. So then the office is closed on Wednesday, okay? Hold on. They don't charge a late fee until the 6th. So, um, Wednesday they're closed. Um, so, I was planning on going that Thursday. But the thing is, is that winter weather hit pretty dang bad. And it was sleeting on Wednesday. It started sleeting early Wednesday morning. Okay, like wee hours of the morning on Wednesday. And then all day Thursday, Tuesday night it started. It was crazy as hell because Tuesday was a was a, a nice day. Hell, it was like 60-something degrees. And then overnight it started sleeting. And so, yeah, late Tuesday night into early Wednesday, 
early Wednesday morning, like in the wee hours, it started sleeting and snowing, okay? And it snowed the whole time. There was a lot of snow out there, probably like a foot. I would say at least a foot. It was thick, but it was on top of ice, basically, okay? So then came Thursday, which I was planning on taking my money order, Thursday, but I didn't know the weather was going to be like that. I didn't know there was going to be ice just like everywhere. So I called the apartment complex and I'm like, look, I got your money order. I got it on Tuesday. So unfortunately, I, I have it to pay right now, but I really don't want to risk slipping on ice, you know. So anyway, um, she says it's going to have to be a late fee. But I'm like, but that's not right. And if I slip on ice, like, seriously, the way I see it is like, look, man, I have your money order. You can see the date on, on the money order to see that it's it was on time. Um, if I'm like, but if I slip on ice and I end up breaking, if I, you know, hurt myself, that that would make you guys liable for that. Because, like, literally, it's ice out there. And I would have to walk to your office. And I'm not trying to slip and fall on ice. I literally, I have arthritis. So, you know, no. <laughs> there is no freaking way. I got arthritis in my ankle and in my freaking knees. Which, you know, like I'm trying to get rid of it. I am in remission, you know, of all of these poisons. And I've, I've, I've lived on this earth for 45 years. You know, so all of the things that I put into my temple, I'm living, you know, the results of that, okay, we can't get around that, this is our penance to pay, you know, for the things that we did to our temple, in ignorance, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, okay, now that I have knowledge, I do strive, I do try to eat better, and I need to do better, I seriously need to do better, I can do better, you know, I really can do better, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to strive, I'm going to keep striving to do better, okay, so anyway, um, I decided not to walk up there, because I didn't want to slip and fall, okay, so I prayed to the Father, and I'm like, Father, you know I don't have the extra money to pay these late fees, and then not only that, they have upped my rent, so they upped my rent, so I still didn't have enough. Even with the money order that I got, they want to almost double that plus the late fee, okay? So, I'm like, I prayed about it because I didn't have the money, okay? I literally did not have the money. My dad had gave me um, the money to go see the doctor because I had an appointment. I was supposed to go on the 3rd, but they canceled it because of the inclement weather, okay? So... Yep, so on the on the first is when I got the dang money order, okay? And then the inclement weather and all of that happened, so they canceled my freaking appointment on the third, on that Thursday, you know, which I was going to pay my rent um, that day. You know, I was going to have them probably drop me off at the uh, office to pay it, but because they, they canceled my appointment, I'm like, there's no way I'm going to walk to the freaking office to pay this rent. No freaking way. If they close the freaking clinic, obviously it's treacherous out there. So anyway, I prayed about it. And would you know that, when was it? Let me look and see exactly. I'm going to let you know exactly. And... I, don't, I really don't want this to be too dang long, but, hold on. something um 
Alright, so this was Sunday, okay? I'm gonna read to you this chat, okay? And so, I was just, we were just chatting. This is a former, I would say, lover, okay? Um, and this was the last one uh, that I had um, before I, well, when I left SL, basically. So she was the last one I was with when I left SL, like, completely left it. Okay, so anyway, this is Sunday, 8.34 p.m. She asks me, you get a new computer yet? Question, and I respond, no, nowhere near able to purchase a computer. I literally have $8 to my name in my bank account at the moment. She says, oh, do you need help with expenses? She says, shit is expensive now. I said I need a new PC because it's tripping more and more. Damn file explorer freezes now. When I try to search a picture, it freezes and crashes. I have no idea how I was able to run SL. She said, yeah, me either. I meant in terms of cash now, not a PC. And I said, well, if you want to help, I'm kind of in a bind at the moment because they just up my rent. And even though I got a money order on the first, apparently it wasn't for enough. Because they wanted more now instead of the previous amount. Plus the snowstorm. I wasn't able to take the money order to them on Thursday. So now it's late. They want the different amount. Plus the late fees. And a dollar a day till I pay it. I said I only have the original money order. And eight dollars. So I would need. I, to, I told her I would need about maybe eighteen dollars. Um, to make to make it up because I didn't I didn't have you know enough to make it up so um, she said what's your cash app and I said I'm looking it up and I give her my cash app and she sent me fifty dollars like that is the most high that's the most high working on my behalf and so I said I, I said thank you and I told her that that was a blessing and I said I didn't I said I didn't know how I was going to come up with the funds and she says I feel there was a real reason we connected tonight and she says God moves I said I literally prayed about it and uh, she said cause the line of conversation never goes there and she says wow and I and I said I'm gonna go on Tuesday or on Tuesday I gotta work tomorrow um, and she said, that just sent me, I said, huh? And she says, like, how amazing you reach out after prayer. She says, I ask questions that I usually don't. I said, oh no, I had prayed about this a few days ago when I found out they upped my rent. And she said, that led to you getting what you need. I said, I was just messaging you tonight because you came across my mind. She says, right. And she said, uh, and I was thinking, I said, she said, right. And I said, I was thinking of you a lot lately. And she says, that was the most time, man. And she says, we don't always agree. I know I need prayer. And she says, for some reason, when I'm scared, I said, I pray for you often. And she says, she was still in the middle of a sentence. She says, uh, for some reason, when I'm scared, I come to you. And I said, that's only because you know I'm a servant of the Father. She says, I was scared some tonight. That is why my mind is blown. I said, you know fear is not from him, right? And she says, it's more internal guilt. I said, oh no, that's not fear. That's conviction. That's telling you that you need to seek him with your whole heart. And she says, hmm, that is a new perspective. I said, his spirit is in the earth right now, so you are feeling his presence. And if there are things we are involved in that's not of him, then it's the conviction we feel. But once we truly seek him and become obedient, that conviction goes away. And if it comes up again, then we need to seek him and find out what it is we are doing that's grieving him. And I said, I really appreciate you helping me out. And um, I said, I pray that the Father blesses you threefold. She says, no problem, for it is really hard out here. She says, I know that I am blessed that way. I said, yeah, it is, but it's about to get better for us. Not the majority, but the few that is obedient to the Father. Then I said, I was wanting to talk to you about something I was reading. I found it interesting and thought that you may find it interesting as well. 
and I asked her if it was possible we could talk. But she said, not at the moment, text is better. But then she up and vanished. So, <laughs> um, she does that a lot. That's hella freaking frustrating. But she does that. Um, so anyway... Um, I guess that was the last thing that I was going to say, you know, how the father um, looks out for his children that are walking in obedience, you know, to his word and doing their best to like live their lives according to his word. Okay. Now I got to get ready to walk to the store to get water. Because I just drank the little bit I had left. Shalom.